Real prayer, petitioning, or affirming. There's not a person on this planet who hasn't heard of prayer. Everyone prays at some time or another, except, of course, atheists. People pray in times of perceived need. Others pray in times of joy or in gratitude. Everybody who prays will agree. Some of their prayers have been answered, but not all of them. Why is this so? To answer this, we must delve into the whole nature of prayer and its mechanics. In order to even consider praying, we must first believe that there is some sort of chance that our prayer will be heard and then answered. Somehow, whomever hears this prayer, usually God or a higher power of sorts, will answer our prayer and help us or others. Of course, somehow everyone's prayer gets listened to or heard. After all, God is omniscient and can do this. But why are some people's prayers not answered? Are some more important than others? Do some people take some sort of precedent over another? Why? 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 In my books, Speaking Thoughts into Existence and Scientific Prayer, I address the topic of spiritual prayer if you will, as mere cause and effect, sort of like the natural result of a combination of visualization, faith, and belief. In reality, the primary ingredients of scientific prayer or prayer treatments is faith. So much faith that, in fact, you must believe, feel, and live as though your prayer has already been answered. This is the key. Apparently, some indigenous people pray for rain successfully by silently standing outside, visualizing and feeling as if it is already raining. They feel the sogginess in their shoes and the drops upon their bodies. They can smell the moisture in the trees and bushes. They can hear the drops upon the leaves and ground, and they stand rejoicing, embracing this imagined downpour as they silently pray a prayer of gratitude for the rain. The key to this is they're not only seeing, visualizing it, but more importantly, feeling it, believing it, accepting it as reality. We can and have previously broken down the steps of scientific prayer, oneness or identifying with universal mind, denying, proclaiming and affirming, releasing and then acceptance. In essence, becoming one with God during mystical meditation and then feeling gratitude, peace, love, joy, denying the condition that supposedly is, say, poverty or illness, finally proclaiming otherwise the desired result, for example, wealth or well-being, releasing this out, and accepting that it is already so in the mind of the universe with feelings of great euphoria, relief, etc. This method may be used for distant healing of someone as well, such as in a meditative treatment or prayer treatment with a patient residing elsewhere. One merely utilizes, or rather visualizes, the patient and or during meditative state looks at their name, birth date, etc., and then declares them well with all of the emotion as if it is already so. Similarly, one may bless someone, either in person or at a distance, by visualizing a white light at their head and heart with two corresponding white lights at your body while in meditative state. Nevertheless, this is a prayer not of petitioning, advocating, and pleading, but a prayer of proclamation, affirming, and acceptance that it is already so. I have spoken previously about knowing what to pray for. If one is poor, obviously one prays for a job and money. If one is sick, one prays for health. If one is lonely, then they pray for love. All of this is also subject to karma. You may be prone to having less money or being lonely. You may be prone to having less money or being lonely because of previous lifetimes cause and effect or karma. This can be corrected by affirming during meditation that you've sublimated negative karma for God's perfect light and love. 
you must make sure that you're always affirming this as well as affirming that you're releasing your personal ego will to God, that you identify with God, and that your prayers are coming from the mind of God on a continuing basis during meditation, as meditation will powerize these affirmations or statements. Then and only then do you have a chance at successful prayer. In traditional prayer, this would be the case, however, in mysticism. One handles things thusly. If one is poor, one gives money to those more needy, as if you've already have an access, an excess rather. One helps another if they cannot help themselves due to poor health. One makes a friend if one is lonely and so forth. In other words, start to live as if you already have abundance in whatever particular area that concerns you. This is only part of it, although it is a great part. The great part is knowing what to pray for. The regular earthly shortcomings that our personal ego will is more than aware of will come and go. Money will be made and spent. Friends and lovers will come and go. One's health will rise and fall. If you are regularly practicing mystical meditation, you will notice that the ups and downs have become less extreme. You are beginning to place importance on other things in your life, such as the well-beingness of others. This is called universal love or humanitarianism, and as you become more and more grateful for just being alive, the emphasis will be less and less on yourself and more and more on helping others. It is as if, thanks to meditation, you have a higher perspective of life, and this perception is starting to motivate and drive you more. You may even be starting to use your intuition or God guidance to lead you to where you should be, with whom, and what you should be doing. You may even start to discover some God-given skills and talents that previously you were unaware of. This God guidance or intuition will guide you to what you should truly pray for, with the chances therefore increasing for you to get what you prayed for, since it came from the mind of God, and God knows what you have need of before you even know. It is the same as you not getting necessarily what you want, but really what you need. Did you ever wonder why, after praying for something, you actually got it, and then it was gone after some time or you couldn't afford it? That's because your personal ego will decided for you what you thought you wanted or needed and it somehow materialized. The things that our personal ego will materializes never is long lasting. Whatever God materializes for us is. It's as simple as that. You see now how crucial it is to pray for what God wants for you and the way to this knowledge. As long as you allow God to guide you to what you really need, the more your chances of your prayer being answered and to you keeping whatever it was the universe manifested for you. This is the exact opposite of that popular DVD, The Secret. We don't tell God the universe what we want. We open ourselves to know what God wants for us. Let your intuition guide you and you'll never go far wrong. How does one discern whether it is wishful thinking or actual God guidance or intuition? Only time proves this, and unless you were born with a higher than average degree of spiritual ESP, you must practice regular, ongoing mystical contact meditation, and over time your intuition will develop to a reliable degree. You will begin to see this more and more over time. Trust God to lead you to what you need, and you will have. As above, so below. As we breathe, so we exist. Because we exist, we are love, naturally. Love exists through us, as us. Love is the only thing that is real, for it is Source, Mother, Father, God itself. Right here, right now, in this energy in this existence called love. We are creativity. We are divine wisdom. We allow anything that is not love to simply melt away into the purity of divine existence, divine love. 
Any darkened forms are now transforming and transmuting into pure source energy, source light, and the healing is occurring right here and right now. A healing for illness, poverty, sadness has no room to exist in this brilliance of divinity, of pure love. It can only exist in the shadows, but in the brilliance of purity and source light, there are no shadows. There is no darkness, therefore, no room nor place for anything other than love and light, wellness, wholeness, now and forevermore. It is already so in the mind of the universe as the law of creativity is self-perpetuating even now. And we release this word knowing that it shall, can, will return to us multiplied of itself, never void. We give thanks for this knowing of creativity, this knowing of a higher existence of love. Letting it be so now and unto forevermore and so it is, and so it is. Amen, amen, amen.